hello everyone and in this video we'll be discussing a short uh, description of topic of mediastinal tumors so first of all mediastinal first of all we have to see the anatomy of the mediastinum so basic uh, which area is called as mediastinum is located actually between the uh, two lungs right and the left surrounded by two lungs and it is situated in the midline of the thoracic cavity that is your sternum and it is divided into upper and the lower uh, lower uh, mediastinum in which later they are divided into superior and the inferior compartments and further inferior is divided into anterior middle and posterior mediastinum so uh, this is a basic anatomy in this diagram you can see relate this in this diagram okay so this part is your this is a cross section in the lateral view you are seeing so this is your uh, vertebra this is your sternum as i told you so from here you can see and beside them will be the both side from uh, both from both the side uh, the lung will be covering this area right and the left and upper section you can see this is a superior compartment and which consists of your superior only superior mediastinum and below this at the level of your t4 vertebra actually this is t4 vertebra this black line this is an anatomical uh, point and below that we have the inferior compartment you can see and this out of which we have three further divisions this one is your from the anterior side so anterior mediastinum and this blue one is your middle and from the posterior side uh, on the base of vertebra is your posterior mediastinum so in these areas we have different types of tumors so on anterior you can see germ cell tumors lymphomas thymoma so all these tumors occur in the anterior mediastinum middle you can see aneurysm and cyst bronchogenic cyst lymphadenopathy you can see in the posterior you can see lymphomas neurogenic mass aneurysm and esophageal disease and somewhat lymphoma also so this is the basic overview you can see about the mediastinum now we have different forms of tumor we have first of all tumors of thymus gland in this region and we have neurogenic formations and uh, germinogenic oncopathologies that is the germ cells we have lymphoid tumors of lymphoid origin and we have mesenchymal origin of soft tissues or you can say skin or superficial tissues so these are the uh, different types and mediastinal anatomy we have discussed and lower is further divided into anterior middle as i told you now how often uh, and who has mediastinal tumor so frequency of this mediastinal tumor is around 1% out of all the oncopathology or you can say all the tumors or cancers so this tumor actually occurs 1% and most uh, it is most common in the people uh, of young people it is most common and the middle aged people you can say about the age of 20 to 40 years and same frequency is present in men and women there is no differentiation now what are the signs you will see basic common signs you will see with the patient coming with mediastinal tumors the first sign we have will be having the cough shortness of breath dyspnea pain in the chest will be there dysphagia the patient will not able to swallow properly that condition is called as dysphagia and there can be compression syndrome of svc that is your superior vena cava so because of the presence of tumor your superior vena cava may be compressed and due to that there will be lack of blood supply in the region of your upper extremities that is in the brain or face so you can see different types of swelling in that region so that syndrome is actually called as syndrome of superior vena cava due to compression now uh, let's discuss detail in this compression syndrome now as superior vena cava is uh, responsible for the return of blood from the head neck and the upper limbs and the trunk back to the heart so if there is any compression to this uh, bigger vessel this vein so you you can see the signs of swelling of your face face as i told you neck and upper extremities and common symptoms that is dyspnea cough and expansion of the collateral thoracic vein you will see in this area so you can see this patient coming with your syndrome this syndrome you can see so this you can see this is, a, this is actually your superior vena cava uh, okay vena cava is entering here and this is a tumor beside this vein and this tumor can compress this vein and because of that the patient can have different edema of the face neck and upper chest and distension in the axillary subclavian and different veins which are uh, uh, carrying the blood towards the vena cava so this is the patient uh, will be coming with that with this appearance okay edema of the face and neck so this is the compression syndrome of superior vena cava now let's move on to the another type of uh, tumor now we have the tumors of thymus gland or uh, thymoma or the thymus carcinoma now thymus is located behind the sternum as it is uh, um, in after 
puberty you can say this is a uh, non prominent organ okay so before that if the tumor develops that is visible now this organ is actually located behind the sternum on the posterior as uh, somewhat expert and between the lungs and the upper mediastinum this is present in the upper mediastinum that is the superior part now it is an immune organ okay so this organ is immune organ this thymus and this supports of normal functioning of your immune system but it is uh, okay when it is combined with misthenia gravis this is uh, actually your there is inability to movement of the your skeletal muscles that is wasting of the muscle the mo uh, most common sign for misthenia gravis so it is an autoimmune disorder so that can occur with this thymus uh, that is a tumor of thymus gland com uh, in combination with misthenia gravis okay so uh, that condition is actually called as parathymic uh, syndrome okay so now thymus tumor have no symptom as such he will uh, patient will be having no symptom as such but if the tumor is malignant uh, they can metastasize uh, to the pleura region of the lungs and can also go to the extra thoracic region that is the beyond the chest but after in a malignant case there can be symptoms like chest pain cough hoarseness of voice shortness of breath and superior vena cava syndrome as I, we have discussed okay so uh, this was the uh, tumors of thymus gland you can see here so this is this is the lung this is you can see the lung and this below part you can see is your mediastinum okay so this is your tumor of your thymus gland okay this one is your thyroid this one is your thymus this orange one you can see it here now comes to the neurogenic tumor Neurogenic tumor has oncopathology of swan origin and neuroblastic two types of origin from the axillary cell and neuroblastic from the uh, neuro, uh, neuroblast cells. In that we have different tumors like swamanoma, neurofibroma, ganglioneuroma and ganglioneuroblastoma. So these are different tumors names according to the origin. Okay, And from the posterior medi uh, mediastinum, uh, they can further enter in the spinal canal. Now we have uh, germinogenic oncopathology that is a tumor originating from the germ cells that may be uh, present after the intrauterine development of the particular uh, person. So that is uh, due, uh, due to the germ cell that is called as the formed in the primitive germ cell that remain in the mediastinum from the period of your early intrauterine development. And most commonly this types of tumors, germ cell tumors are present on the anterior mediastinum region as I told you in the lower compartment okay and to diagnose this type of tumor we check the alpha fetoprotein and beta uh, chorionic gonadotropin in the human serum is used okay so this uh, we use this types of tumors to diagnose the patient and now lymphoid tumors if we go to the lymphoid tumors we have actually the tumors originating from the lymphoid uh, that is lymphocyte in the blood cells and immune cells these are and we have two types Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma okay so I will show you the image of Hodgkin's lymphoma you can see this image this is a image for your Hodgkin's lymphoma okay so there can be adenopathy in the region of your mediastinal region lymph nodes are swollen or you can say dilated and that is lead to your lymphoid tumor that is Hodgkin lymphoma okay so, the, so this is the main representation of the patient now mesenchymal tumors as i told you mesenchymal the origin from will be from the skin or soft tissues or superficial tissues and these are uh, tumors are mo uh, mostly are benign tumors rarely they convert into malignant and this uh, example can be lipoma like this is the overgrowth of your adipocytes in the superficial or the soft tissues and other uh, can be fibroblastic or myofibroblastic that affects your skin and the superficial soft tissues so the treatment for this types of tumors like you can do surgical resections for this types of tumors okay so in this uh, mediastinal region you can see this is actually your lipoma this uh, swollen or the dilated part of your uh, mediastinal region you can see this vessels areas and there is somewhat lipoma okay soft tissue bulk bulkation of soft tissue due to deposition of your adipocytes here the fatty cells okay and some differences you can see according to the regions of your mediastinum like anterior we have teratoma benign non hodgkin lymphoma is also present in anterior hodgkin is also present here thymic hyperplasia thymic cyst in the middle you can see lymphangioma like uh, in the blood vessels in the lymphatic region 
non hodgkin can also be present in the middle part posterior you can see the ganglia that is neurogenic tumors okay so neurogenic tumors are mostly present in the posterior aspect and neuroblastoma okay so this was the your medial stenal tumors thank you